Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm going to be going over another question that I was asked, and I've been asked this a few times, so I figure I'd go over it today. The question came in from Drew Addington, and it was well, on my sheet here, it says two days ago. So sorry for not replying to you. I've been quite busy in the shop, but I'm going to make a video about it. So would you please do a video over coal forges versus gas forges? Maybe going into each kind of forge, um, let's see here, he loves the videos and appreciates the clean language. I appreciate you, Drew, for that. So, I won't be going into making them just yet. I've made several other gas forge videos. I want to make a coal forge video on how to make and then, you know, set guys up with that. There's other channels um, out there on YouTube that have already done videos on similar like topics like that. I'll get into that eventually. But today I'm going to show you the differences between the two and which one I like better. So I'll put this disclaimer at the very front of this. Just like my power hammer versus press video series that I did, I have no interest in calling any tool better in effect of another tool. To me, a tool is nothing more than a tool. It's meant to get the job done. So if it gets the job done, it's the correct tool for the job. So how do you choose between a gas forge or a coal forge? You base that upon the job that needs to be done. So we will go ahead and get into that. I'll take you over to my coal forge first, and then I'll explain a little bit about my gas forge, and hopefully this will answer the question. Thank you all for watching. Okay, everyone, so here we are at my coal forge. Uh, what do I want to talk about coal forge? Well, some of the advantages of having a coal forge is the fact that you can get a very nice, localized, intense heat on a section. Now, this is very valuable whenever you're working with wrought iron, actual wrought iron, not just mild steel disguised as wrought iron, but actual wrought iron. It's very handy to take a work on wrought iron. It achieves the temperatures that it likes. Now, this can get so hot that it can melt your mild steel, or, well, it can melt just about anything. You can get this very hot. So you get really good intense heat. It's very versatile because you can fit in pieces however long you like, you know, in odd-shaped pieces. You can put all sorts of different shapes and things in here, and you can work in the coal forge. So that's one of the advantages is you're not limited by anything but your space around the coal forge, essentially. As this heats from one side, and then you can pull coal over the top and keep it insulated from the top, and so on and so forth. Now, disadvantage. Uh, disadvantage to a coal forge is the fact that, you see all this? There's smoke. There's smoke involved with coal forge. A lot of it will go out the roof. Some of it will stay in your shop in Neville, depending on whether you're having weird drafting days or if you've set up a power draft system to actually pull the smoke out of the shop and things of that nature with proper makeup there. But the coal forge is a dirty forge. You're going to have soot. You're going to have clinkers. You're going to have ashes you have to contend with things of that nature, and this is just simply not possible for everybody's situation. Uh, I have a friend of mine, he works out of his garage, and, you know, he's a, well, you know, a weekend warrior. All he's got is the weekend to do his thing. He's got a few hours at that. You know, everything he has has to be tore back down and stowed in the garage someplace, and so he has to go do his smithing out in the middle of his driveway, okay? He doesn't have his own building. Well, in that case, a coal forge is not handy, so he chose gas. And that is the correct forge for him to choose. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that is the correct forge for him to choose. If you do, you know, if you're out in the country, if your neighbors don't mind the smell of coal smoke in the morning, if they find it nostalgic, this here is a perfect option for anybody starting out blacksmithing or even a professional smith. My wife bought me this coal forge 10 years ago nearly today. I mean, it's been nine, nine some odd years, nine plus years ago. She bought me this coal forge and I still use it today. In fact, I just used it yesterday and the day before and all last week. So once again, 
A coal forge can be a very handy addition to the shop. It has its upsides and its downsides. I can't go into all the upsides and downsides. Uh, there's just too many to list. There, there really is. Mainly it's the dirt and the smoke, the availability of coal, you know, carbon footprint. You could go into a million different things. I choose my tool based upon the job at hand. And then that's what makes it best. So you won't find in this video where I'm going to say one's better than the other. Now, if you want to know my biased opinion, I prefer coal. I like the nostalgia. I like the grit and the dirt. I like getting dirty by the end of the day. I like to be all smudged up and look like a real blacksmith, right? I like the noise. There's not any noise except for maybe your hand crank blower. Or if maybe you got a, an electric blower, you can even set that thing outside. And then, you know, you have almost no noise in your shop. Very nice. So it's a very pleasant experience to work with a coal forge. Those are, those are just my opinions. I can get the intense heat I want. I can work large stuff, work small stuff. And if I had to lose everything and go back to simplicity, I'd keep my coal forge out of everything else. I'd get rid of my gas forge. I'd keep my coal. That's me. That's personally what I would do just because I know what I can do in the coal forge. Now, one thing else I will say about an advantage and a disadvantage of the coal forge. An advantage of the coal forge is if you understand how to properly maintain your fire. If you understand this, it is a dream to work in. If you do not understand how to properly maintain your fire, it is absolute hell to work in. Stuff gets burnt, things get over oxygenated, it gets, it, you know, it, the fire gets yay high, you know, you're, you're burning tons of coal and you're not getting a lot of work done. And that all comes from improper management of coal forges. So, once again, it's a blessing and a curse. If you understand how to work with it, so it has a larger learning curve, if you do understand how to work with them, they're great. They're awesome. If you don't understand how to work with a coal forge, uh, it's going to be hell to you, pretty much. So, without further ado, let's move on over to the gas forge, and I'll talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages with the gas forge. Okay, now here we are at the gas forge. So I don't figure I gotta have my head right by it to show you it and explain it to you. So here we are at my gas forge. This is a three burner gas forge. It has the ability to have a divider so I can make it smaller, the heating compartment, and only use one of the three burners if I would like, or just two of the burners. Most of your common gas forges nowadays have two burners or have at least two burners on them. That's just a popularized styling of gas forge. So, advantages of a gas forge. Well, one of the advantages of a gas forge is that you can take a large billet of steel, whatever that is, and you can set it in the gas forge. And hey, you can set its twin sister in the gas forge as well and then walk away from it. And then an hour or 45 minutes or depending on how hot you have your stuff set up, these things are ready to go and you can work multiple billets at one time. This is a great option and this is my go-to whenever I have a lot of production work to do. There's one thing that the Coal forge is a little more difficult with. You have to really watch your fire very closely if you have multiple pieces in it. The old adage, too many irons in the fire. Think a blacksmith for that one. Because too many irons in the fire it antiquates out to you end up losing a few in the fire. Uh, so with a gas forge, you don't have that problem. You set your temperature of your forge. It, it stays about that temperature no more, no less, and you can just keep feeding pieces in and out of it. That's the advantage of the gas forge. The disadvantage of a gas forge really comes at the expense that there is no localized heating. So, I'll show you for instance, like this ram's head I made in another video. 
it is very difficult to get just localized heat on the face or localized heat on one of the horns or localized heat just right where you need to bend it at. What ends up happening most of the time, so you just stick it in here, even if you feather it and leave it out here at the edge, this is going to have heat that soaks up the bar. So now you have this whole piece heated, a big wide area heated. And a lot of times that's just not handy. It's just not handy. You don't need that much heat in the bar. Things like this tong that I made in another video. Yes, I did it on the other end. That's how I do demonstration pieces. Just like this tong blank that I made in another video. It is nice to have a good localized heat of a coal forge when you're making tong bits and things like that. Because you need a lot of heat right in this area, but you don't really need it up here. Because if you have it up here, it's just going to bend and wobble around on you and, and mess up what you're doing out here. You just need the heat where you're hammering at, essentially. So you can localize it and set the materials down in the proper dimensions. So that's one of the downsides to a gas forge. No matter how you stack it up, it's always going to take a long heat on something. Now, with that being said, let's go over another advantage. So, lighting a gas forge is pretty darn quick. And I'll showcase that now. Lighting a gas forge, you turn on your gas. This one happens to have a blower, right? And then you open your valve. shut down time is very quickly in a gas forge. Now, say you have a garage set up like my friend, it's still going to take an hour or two. You got to realize these are very well insulated or they should be. It'll take about two hours for it to cool down enough that you can put it on something flammable safely. So that means like storing it under a bench or getting a box up against it or wherever your gas forge resides at. Maybe you have to go three hours with it before it's safe enough. That is the advantage of a gas forge. Now, you can, it's very clean. There's not a lot, there's no soot. There's scale. The liner will, the liner will disintegrate after a little bit of time. It's just part of it. You're going to have to take and work with it. There's different various creams and lotions, I call them, that you can smear on the thing to, you know, pro preserve the longevity of the liner. It just, if you use a tool, it's eventually going to wear out and you have to take and either replace it or fix it. It's just part of the trade. So, that's it on the gas forge. Uh, as you can see, there's not much to talk about. The, the other thing, the last thing I'll say about the gas forge the one main, one big drawback that I mainly find is weird shaped items. And I'll show you what I mean. So I have another video coming out on this little beaut. This is a banana hanger. It's to hang bananas. And I got a whole video of forging on that thing. But all of a sudden you can see now I can't, now it's got some reach issues, doesn't it? Now I can't get the whole piece in the fire, can I? So, although the coal forge, I did all this in the coal forge, although the coal forge had some of the same issues, I was able to lay most of this whole thing on top of my fire box and pull coal over it and get most of this all heated up. As where this is very difficult to get these various angles inside the mouth or opening of this gas forge. So therefore, it's not handy. Now, I do all ornamental work. So, I understand a lot of guys want to get into blade work. Which one's better for blades? In my opinion, probably a gas forge for blades. Get something with a very small heating chamber, because all you're really doing with blade work is keeping it flat and pointy. You're not getting crazy. There's no big loops or scrolls or odd-shaped 
things that you have to deal with when you're working on a knife blade. So that is my opinion on that. Get you a really nice, tight, economical gas forge if you're wanting, if you're inspiring to be a beginning bladesmith. It'll probably just help you in the long run, especially not burn up or melt tips off the end of the knife blade as you've been forging it. It'll help you with temper control, uh, temperature control. You can also take and do stuff like heat treating a lot easier in a gas forge with a knife blade. Once again, I'm not a knife maker, but I do know quite a few knife makers. And so that would be my suggestion on that. So anyways, uh, yeah, so that's it for the coal forge. Oh, I mean for the gas forge, advantages and disadvantages. So that's it for today, ladies and gents. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, put in the comment section what you think I maybe omitted out of this or what I didn't cover. Uh, I'm sure I did not cover a lot. I didn't cover a whole bunch as I do not believe either one is better. I don't think one's better than the other. This wasn't really asking for that. It was just asking for a video, coal forges versus gas forges, which kind of implies one better or the other. Pick the correct heat source for the job that you're doing. And that's with any tool that you're working with. This is my sole opinion of it. Whether it's popular or not, I really don't care. My opinion of tooling is, is that it is a, it is a vehicle in which to get you from point A to point B. And so some vehicles do it more efficiently, take, you know, sip on the fuel as you go from point A to point B. Some are loud and noisy and exhaust and gas guzzlers to take you from point A to point B. You just have to choose which vehicle's right for you. So same with the tooling. Choose which tool is right for you. So anyways, that's it for today. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section down below. I look forward to hearing from you all. God bless you, and we will catch you on the next one.